Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy AP, back with another video. As you guys have seen in my other videos, um, a lot of times I have to skip through some of those fundamentals of like EQ, compression, um, or else the videos would end up like 10 hours long. This video is to make up for that. Today, we're gonna break down one of the most important and complicated plugins, which is EQ. This plugin is one of the most common plugins. You use it on everything, but for some reason, people still don't understand. Engineers, people that are mixing, stuff like that, they don't fully understand this plugin or what it is. I think part of the reason for that is that when I used to go and look up tutorials on YouTube and like try and learn more about this plugin, a lot of other teachers out there like assume that you know what it is so they don't break it down but everyone just assumes that you know what it is and you know or that you can figure it out on your own and for me it was a little difficult to understand at first because no teachers out there are really really going in depth and teaching you what it is and how to actually understand eq the actual plugin and of course I eventually learned and understood EQ, but it took me longer than it should have if I would have just found a video like this one that I'm making right now that just breaks it down from scratch and helps you really understand it. And by understanding EQ, you're able to use it correctly the way that it's meant to be used. I even see other people that are out there mixing other tracks for other people that don't know how to use EQ correctly. That's what separates good engineers from bad engineers. Sometimes people will be like, hmm, that engineer doesn't really sound the best. If they understood EQ and compression a little better, then their mixes would be a million times better because EQ and compression are the bread and butter of mixing. So what is EQ? Let's break it down. Yo, remember guys, I do a free mix and master giveaway with every single video. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is smash that like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and drop a comment. And every video, I go through the comments and I pick a new winner and I give them a free mix and master. So hop on that now. It's a good way to get a free mix and master. EQ is a plugin that manipulates the frequencies of a sound. So every sound is made up of frequencies. So, you know, a drum, a kick, a voice, the voice is made out of frequencies. I made a chart, I wrote down like a, I drew up a little chart. It's just a little basic chart. I don't have the best writing, you know, but this is a chart to kind of show you what frequencies are. Boom. As you can see, these little squiggly lines represent frequencies of a sound. So every sound has frequencies that go across from zero all the way up to 20,000, which is up here, zero, which is down here. So something to keep in mind, I'm gonna fold this a little bit so I can kind of have it right here. Okay, cool. So something to keep in mind, is that the lower you are in frequency is the lower tones of that sound. So like the bass of like a drum or a 808 or even your voice, all the lows are gonna be down here, you know, 200, you know, and below. Those are the lows of your voice, that's this. Um, if you wanna go practice this at home, take a beat, okay, a, a YouTube beat, anything, okay? and put an EQ strip on it, a channel EQ, and go to 50 and raise 50 up. And you will single out the bass. You'll only hear, you know, that, that boost will boost your 808s without even sweeping and finding it. How do I know that? It's because it's, it's fundamentals. It's the fundamentals of EQ. 50 is around where the 808 is. Your hi-hats are gonna be up here, you know, in the 10K and above, maybe even like, you know, 8K, stuff like that. Those where your hi-hats are gonna be, you know, because they're higher on the spec on the frequency spectrum. Um, your voice is gonna range from everywhere because your voice has tones in every frequency. When do you use EQ? Well, the answer is you use EQ on everything. 
It's the bread and butter of mixing and mastering. It's used on every instrument when you're mixing a beat. It's used on your voice. It's used on, you know, everything. So let's say you're mixing a vocal. How many times do you have to use EQ? That was one of my questions when I first started mi mixing and mastering. My mentor told me as many times as you think you need it. So there's no right or wrong. If you hear, if you are at the end of your mix and you hear something in the voice and you're like, hold up, what is that? You can put an EQ on it and fix it up like that. There's no limit on, you can only use EQ once per vocal track. No, you can use EQ five times per, per vocal track if you need it though, and don't overdo EQ. So guys, we're here in Logic and I have some vocals from my last tutorial, which was the how to make trippy red type vocals, how to get trippy red type effects. So I'm gonna loop this part of the vocal right here. And we're gonna go in here. I muted like the reverb and stuff like that. And all we have is pitch correction and an empty EQ right here, okay? Now let's go in and talk and mess around with some of the stuff that I was talking about earlier. So, I'm gonna play it. Love scars, you broke my heart and you left love scars. I said I loved you, didn't go far. We said forever, but now we're apart, yeah. yeah. As you can hear, you know, it's got the auto-tune, but the voice is kind of like quiet, it's, it's, it doesn't sound crisp as crisp as it could so we're gonna go into this channel EQ and right off the bat I'm gonna press this analyzer so that we can see that analyzer shows you the wavelengths okay I like seeing wavelengths because you know it shows me if I'm doing too much or not doing enough so and of course one thing that you do want to keep in mind is that you want to use your ears no matter what you don't want to rely on looking at these wavelengths all the time. You really just want to use your ears, but the wavelengths, it just kind of gives me somewhere to start. And I'm able to visualize like, okay, am I taking out too much? You know, let me lay back on that. Or let me actually boost this a little more because I see that it's all the way down here compared to the rest. So, but remember, you don't always want to use your eyes. You want to always just use your ears. Love scars, you broke my heart and you left love scars. So right off the bat, one thing that you always do when you're EQing a voice is you want to do a low cut. And what that does is it picks a certain spot, you know, and it cuts everything lower than that out. So in the voice, one thing I was always taught by my mentor, um, who used to mix for Lil Yachty, Nicki Minaj, is that everything under like 75 in a person's voice, that can go. 808s are like the only thing that should really be in the 50s and below. And the, your voice, anything less than 75 is all muddy and it's it, it, it's like ugly sounds uh, out of the voice you know it's bad frequency so what I do is I go over here and I go to 75 and I kind of make that low cut a little sharper like maybe yeah like that and I listen and I sweep and I see if I go a little higher or you know and then I come back down and go a little higher so let's use our ears and let's see what we should to where that low cut should start. Love scars, you broke my heart and you left love scars. I said I love you, didn't go far. We said forever, but now we're apart. Yeah. yeah. Love scars, you broke my heart and you left love scars. I said I love you, didn't go far. We okay, so that sounds good to me. One thing about doing that low, EQ is so tricky because you don't want to do too much. If I were to go and cut over here at like 200 and below, it would completely take out the lows out of your voice and it would just sound like, you know, it would just sound kind of like 
like cold and and icy. It would sound like icy vocals. It, it wouldn't sound, you know, it wouldn't sound alive. So EQ is one of those things that you want to understand and you want to get right, and you don't want to do too much. You want to just do what's needed and then lay off. Some people do too much to their voice where it just distorts the voice completely and it doesn't even sound um, like a, a live voice anymore, you know? That's one of the things about mixing and mastering. If you hear any song on the radio, that voice sounds like clear, clear, and it sounds alive and you you hear the, the bass in that person's voice but you don't hear that they, that they completely took out the lows and you know every voice sounds like it's just perfect and that's what you want you don't want to do too much to the voice where it sounds like you know it sounds unnatural you know when you're mixing a voice a fundamental part to start at is you want to use this as one of your golden rules my mentor taught me to tame then excite Okay, so what that means is you tame your vocals to kind of be even, you want it to be like, you know, you want to take out all the ugly sounds in that first EQ, okay? You want to go around here and you want to take out the ugly sounds and take out the sounds that are kind of like, like being a little too loud and just like, or that you don't want and you want to take them out. And then with your compression, that's another part of taming. I'm not gonna obviously go, this is an EQ lesson, so I'm not gonna go too much into compression, but compression is another tool that you use to tame vocals. So when it gets too loud, it brings it back down to the level with the other frequencies. So that's the part that means tame. And then when your voice is tamed and it's kind of like a smooth C, that's where that second EQ over here comes in and that's when you excite. So you take the voice and you come over here. Oh, that's cheating, I shouldn't have showed that. But that's basically where you come on that second EQ and you start to take the frequencies that you do like and you start to boost them up and that's when you excite the voice, which means your voice is tame and it's smooth and it's smooth sails, smooth waters and then you take little pieces that are extra fire and that's when you excite those frequencies and your voice becomes saucy. It, it starts to stick out in the mix. It starts to sound clearer. It starts to sound... I'm going to show you another example right here in, these, um, in this EQ strip, this first EQ strip. When you boost the highs of the voice, which could be like, you know, 5K and above, that's where your voice gets clearer. That's the clearness in the voice. You know, those higher frequencies. If my vocals came in and they're a little muddy, boost the highs and your vocals will get clear. Love scars, you broke my heart and you left love scars. I said I loved you, didn't go far. We you hear that? Your voice sounds so much clearer. Let let's mute it and then unmute it so we can hear the difference. Love scars, you broke my heart and you left love scars I said I loved you, didn't go far We said forever, but now we're apart, yeah So that's something that could help you get clear vocals, you know One thing you don't want to do is boost it all the way, like, up to here Because then it'll sound really weird Like, let's, I'll, I'll show you guys, watch it's up, it's up six. I, I should just leave it at five. Um, but let's go up to like 15. Some people go crazy, right? Love scar. Ooh, you heard that? Love scars. You broke my heart and you left. That's just 10 dBs difference. And look, it sounds like trash when you do too much. It sounds like trash when you do too much. So that's one thing you need to keep in mind is that you want to go light. I'm going to bring this back down to five. A rule in mixing and boosting and cutting and stuff like that is you really don't want to go past, you want to stay between the dBs of like three and five. So when you're boosting, you want to stay between three and five. If you're cutting, you don't want to cut more than five, three to five, you know? 
And of course, there's no written in stone rules. Everything can be kind of played around with. Like sometimes you're gonna only wanna boost maybe like two, or sometimes it's really crazy and you wanna cut it like seven, you know? You can use your discretion with that, but these are kind of guidelines that you should start at. And if you really feel in your heart that that needs like an, uh, to be cut negative seven instead of negative five, then do it, you know? It's not written in stone. But these are guidelines that, you know, every engineer will tell you, hey, there's really no reason to ever go past five in any direction, okay? It's kind of making it unnatural, you know? You saw how we, how the voice just sounded when we did 15, that's crazy, you know? It sounded trash. So three to five is a good place to start. In another lesson, I'll go through what sweeping is and sweeping is how you find parts of the voice, you know? And um, so that's how you find what you wanna cut or you wanna boost, stuff like that. I'll make another video about what sweeping is and how to sweep. But yeah, this one is just a, basically a, a EQ fundamental video. Um, so yeah, we cut those lows, we made those highs a little bit, and then now what we're gonna do is, I already kind of have a, a compression here, so that one's good. Um, I'm gonna turn it on. So with that EQ and that compression, we just tamed the vocals. Those vocals are tame. They sound smooth, nothing too crazy, nothing sticking out yet. Everything kind of sounds smooth. Now with this second EQ, this is the one where I went and I boosted and I boosted and I took little sounds that sounded great and I just gave them a little extra push up that's where I excited the vocals. So I tamed them with these two and then this third EQ, I excited. Love scars, you broke my heart and it left love scars. I said I loved you, didn't go far. We said forever, but now we're apart, yeah. yeah. Love scars, you broke my heart and it left love scars. So that's a little quick video on what EQ is and how to actually understand what EQ is. Um, I hope this helped some young engineers out there, young artists that are mixing and mastering their own stuff. EQ is one of the most important plugins that you have. So if you're able to understand it, your mix and master will become a million times better. So if you guys have any questions, drop a comment, I'll answer all of them. Um, and I'm gonna be making more videos about compression, breaking down compression, and uh, how to sweep. As always guys, please don't forget to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps out my channel a lot. And also subscribe if you're not subscribed already. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.